Well, you're about to get to hearing for the next 45 minutes. Roger Stone, that's my intro. And you've got big website, a big move you're about to announce. Uh, this is just epic. I, I, I'm on the edge of my seat. I've never been more excited to be on air. Well, Alex, uh, it is, uh, I'm wearing this hat as a homage to Matt Drudge because he's a guy who really did wreck the internet. Uh, he's broken into, uh, as a pioneer, uh, becoming a mass communicator who wasn't owned by uh, a multinational corporation. Uh, and the idea that anyone controls Matt Drudge is offensive. He does a public service by picking up some of the best alternative and conservative uh, media out there and spreading it to the masses. And by the so way, for folks the, that don't know Drudge, you, you're absolutely right. The way to not get something on Drudge is to tell him what to do. Not only that, but uh, I would be honored if he posted everything of mine he ever sees, but uh, I'm not that privileged. So Ted Cruz, uh, you know, he has a problem with the First Amendment, quite obviously. And this wild punch at uh, either me or Matt Drew, Drudge is senseless. Look, there was a media uproar last week when I suggested that Trump supporters visit the hotels of delegates. Let me be a little more specific. From the beginning, the problem here has been one of Trojan delegates, Trojan horse delegates. These Trojan horse delegates uh, are uh, very specifically uh, holding seats uh, in delegate positions uh, who are elected to Donald Trump, but not loyal to Trump. The party machines are seeking to insert uh, these hacks, these loyalists, into delegations, which gives them a majority on the question of rules, credentials, and platform, all of which must come before the first ballot for president. So even if Donald Trump has uh, uh, 1,237 votes, which under the capable uh, leadership of Paul Manafort uh, and the incredible talents as a candidate and a communicator of Donald Trump, I think they will have. The establishment plans to steal this anyway. Uh, it is these Trojan horse delegates who will be central to the steal. What I suggest, quite frankly, is that each one of them be required to sign a loyalty pledge it's voluntary, of course, agreeing to stick with Donald Trump, the, the choice of the voters, the voters who elected that delegate. They should pledge to stand uh, with the popular uh, vote or move to North Korea. Correct. Now, there's no you don't you're not forced to sign. But if you won't sign, it will identify for the media who the Quislings are. That's right. If it's you're going to steal an election in America and cancel America, you better put your John Hancock on it. Right, so it exposes uh, the bosses uh, who are subverting the democratic process. Donald Trump is winning these primaries big. This just in, he won Arkansas. Now there is a Cruz Rubio alliance planning to block Donald Trump in Arkansas from getting his rightful majority. Uh, we've seen the strong arm tactics that were utilized in Colorado. We uh, have uh, seen a rare victory where Donald Trump uh, uh, and the forces loyal to uh, John Kasich teamed together to block Ted Cruz out uh, in Michigan. So two can play this game, and I expect it's going to be hard fought right to the end. We are going to march on Cleveland. Delegations, we're going to ask every Trump delegate to sign the voluntary pledge. Are you with the voters or are you with the bosses? It's, it's only elementary that Trump delegates should vote for Donald Trump and not against his interests. Let, let me stop you right there. Paul Question. Manafort, your long time partner that now basically, according to Politico, runs the campaign. I know you don't want to you know, brag about it, but hopefully saving the campaign came out, as you know, on Meet the Press and said, look, they're breaking the rules. They've gone too far. We're going to file complaints. Look, it's one thing if there's a close election, because I've looked at the rules, and then there's a brokered situation. But it's another thing when you just cancel elections altogether and then just have the party insiders tell you that Cruz won everything. For me, we need to get out and educate the public that why do we get rid of Jim Crow and poll taxes? I mean, we have election laws for popular votes. There's public interest here. It's racketeering for the party to say, now popular votes don't count. This is unprecedented. 
and I think that Trump should press this. The problem is, watching mainstream TV, they won't show the full clip. They just show Trump saying, it's rigged, and then make a joke and say, well, he's just mad he didn't win Colorado, and they don't even tell people now in some of these shows, I know you don't want to bash Fox because you're on there some, but I was watching Fox this morning, they wouldn't even say that there was no vote. So they've reached a new level, and, and that's the talking point from Cruz, is he's running around saying, it's a democracy, I have the clip played it last hour, I won Colorado, and, and Drudge won't report that I won Colorado. What? He reported you stole it. So, so from your expert understanding, and, and of course, uh, Paul's understanding of this, and he hinted at this on national television, is this not illegal, uh, what's going on, or is this not a violation of the, quote, rules to just cancel things? Well, first of all, let me make very, very clear uh, yet again that I have no formal nor informal role in the Donald Trump campaign. Paul Manafort is uh, his own man. He's a skilled professional. I'm proud to say that we have, we're partners for 15 years. Uh, I would point out that my other partner, who I hold in high, very high regard, Charlie Black, a very skilled uh, operative, as shrewd as they come, now working for John Kasich, which is his constitutional right. Uh, he's not to be underestimated. He's a, a very clever guy who knows the rules. Uh, but uh, I, I want to be very clear that, that Paul Manafort works for Donald Trump, and Donald Trump runs Donald Trump's campaign. I, Alex, am going to be outside uh, the convention hall with you with some bullhorns, and hopefully with thousands at the Stop the Steal march and rally. Now, this is, to be very clear, a nonviolent, peaceful protest. I uh, was in the 1968 campaign for Richard Nixon. I understand that violence in Cleveland of any kind would be detrimental to Donald Trump's uh, capability to win. Sure, you you should have proviso this. You never said this. They're running fake headlines. How do we counter them lying? Everybody must come to Cleveland. Everybody must go to Denver this Friday to protest at the RNC as well, the big steal. Yeah, so when they say, why do you want to visit the hotel rooms of delegates? It's very simple. I want them to sign the pledge. I respect if they don't want to sign the pledge. That's their right. But the, the voters elected them to vote for Donald Trump. That's our democracy. So if the bosses have put them into a Trump seat, Texas, for example, where the delegation does not include a single actual Trump supporter, not one, because George P. Bush and Rick Perry and Ted Cruz have ganged up to ensure that they control the Texas delegation on questions of rules and credentials. That's where the big steal will take place. Unprecedented. You talked about breaking some of the biggest news ever today. I put it out on Twitter. Roger Stone, the man that the Republicans establishment once arrested, is going to break some of the biggest news ever on the broadcast. Uh, I know that you're uh, launching a Trump ballot security .org. Uh, Tell us about Trump ballot security .org. We're going to tweet that out and some of the other plans. And then you always know weeks and months ahead of time what's going to happen. Tell us the next shoe to drop. Well, here, Alex, is the, is the breaking news before we talk about some of the important projects that will help Donald Trump. Uh, Ted Cruz has continually given the impression uh, that he has some kind of inside track with the Rubio delegates. As you know, Marco Rubio uh, requested that his delegates not be released. He has in excess of 100 delegates. Uh, those delegates uh, are obviously going to play a very large role as well as the 230 uh, delegates who are unpledged. Uh, this is uh, where I think uh, all sides will be wooing those delegates. They're going to be hearing from Donald Trump Jr., I imagine. They'll hear from Ivanka. They, some of them may hear directly from Donald Trump. Uh, the Trump family is uh, Donald Trump's greatest asset. Uh, they have a special tonight uh, with Anderson Cooper, where you'll be able to see the, the Trump family in an interview, I believe it is. So it, it is, uh, it is uh, an important part uh, of this strategy to focus on uh, those that very delegates. Now, Ted Cruz has maintained that he somehow has an inside track on those delegates, that those delegates would never vote for Donald Trump. I can tell you definitively uh, that, that Senator Rubio did not ask for the non-release of those delegates uh, as a favor to Ted Cruz, that those delegates, based on a survey of them that has been done, by experienced people, indicates that they're loyal to Senator Marco Rubio. 
Uh, they have no great high regard for Ted Cruz. Uh, they're not Trump supporters, but they are also not not Trump supporters. So the idea that Rubio has a, a corner here uh, is a falsehood that his agents continue to spread. I don't know where these important votes will ultimately end up. Uh, I was encouraged uh, to see uh, that uh, that they are that the senator has decided to hold his delegation. Uh, he did not uh, receive the endorsement of Jeb Bush. Uh, there is bad blood between Marco and Bush because he had the audacity to pursue his constitutional right to run for office. You know, Alex, uh, as Teddy Roosevelt said, the credit belongs to the man who gets in the arena, uh, not the man who stands on the side and points out where the strong man stumbles. I give Marco credit for just running the gauntlet, for trying. He wasn't successful, but he at least deserves our respect for the effort. So some of the big breaking news here is, and, and, and I know you've been in these meetings the last few days. I mean, you've been eyes on the ball in, in person, uh, if I can go that far, that Rubio is not pledged to Cruz. Cruz is lying and that Rubio's huge amount of delegates are up for grabs. And hey, Donald Trump and his crew and Paul Manafort and others have a lot of tricks up their sleeves that aren't dirty, but are going to be able to block some of the establishment punches being thrown uh, at this uh, free and open election that if, if this was a normal election, Trump would already be obviously uh, the nominee and people would be getting behind him. But the Republicans have said, the head of the Republican Party in Colorado has said in a tweet, I'm ready to burn down the party. Let's do it. I, I mean, for me, this is just incredible that these individuals uh, are clearly operatives wanting to make a one party system and basically globalize things. They've already moved on wanting jobs at the U.N. or jobs at the IMF or World Bank. Uh, and these people are just open traders. I think this is sedition. This is uh, private parties working together uh, to create an oligarchy. Uh, and, and I don't say this for rhetoric. You're the one they're wanting to arrest for saying we should, you know, exercise our First Amendment and demonstrate. I think this is criminal. I, I mean, this is an attempt to take the country over. Uh, this is a racketeering. This is this makes Jim Crow look like a blessing. Uh, I mean, I know that... Uh, I don't have rhetoric strong enough is what I'm saying, Roger, to describe yes. the climate these people have entered into. I mean, what can we really say about Ted Cruz? I liked Ted Cruz six months ago, but this guy is just a monster. A Phyllis Schlafly, I mean, it just goes on and on. And his Skype just paused. We'll, we'll, we'll get him to load back up here in just a moment. I mean, people, this is crazy. And then Cruz going out with these talking points that uh, he won... And why is, you know, why is uh, Trump mad? And then he won't say it's because they stole the election? You know, and, and not just Colorado, now they're announcing four other states? It's in the Washington Post. Oh, that's just a new thing. We use, you know, we don't have votes. We're getting to Skype reconnected. And look, it's crazy. Matt Drudge is being attacked because he links to the local paper, the Denver Post, saying that the election was canceled in the state and voters don't get to vote. I, I mean, how is Matt Drudge not supposed to link to that? That's sensational news. That's that's a seismic event in American politics. Uh, your Skype's back, sir. At least it looks like it's somewhat stabilized when we may have to go to phone. Uh, Roger, can you hear me? Yeah, we're having some uh, distortion here. I think the NSA is probably uh, monitoring this. Oh, you think they might be messing with the election? I think that's probably the case. But 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 seriously, Roger Stone, we're going to break here in a moment. What would you call this? Because I think it's a criminal takeover. I think it's unprecedented what they're doing. The spin machine, the deception level, where Cruz is saying it's a democracy. I got the popular vote. We have the clip in Colorado. I mean, this is a new level of lying. Well, also, let's uh, let's realize that there are some interpretations interpretations of the law that indicate that because this is a race for party office and not public office, that actual buying of delegates for cash uh, would not necessarily be illegal. Now, in the 30s and 40s, this was very common. Uh, I've not heard of anything like this in recent conventions, but I, I put nothing behind the oil and gas uh, interests who are funding Ted Cruz's campaign. This guy is a wholly owned subsidiary of the energy industry uh, with a Bush lineage. Uh, and when I've exposed uh, his key role in the election and the policies of George W. Bush and his wife's ties to the CFR 
Goldman Sachs uh, and the uh, and the insiders, uh, and Matt Drudge chooses to put them up, he goes out of his mind. That's right, because he's a total sleeper agent of the Rockefeller East Coast Republicans that we've been trying to get rid of for 40 years. Roger Stone straight ahead, Trump ballotsecurity.org, stopthesteal.org. That's right, there's an echo in here. We're going back to Roger Stone. I'm going to do something I don't normally do. He's with us for the rest of the hour. We're going to take a few phone calls in about 10, 15 minutes. Specific, quick questions for Roger Stone, the Trump confidant, longtime buddy, wingman, you name it. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. Really just Trump's 40-something year buddy. Another one of his friends of 40 years, not as close, but knew him in the construction and banking, Dr. Jerome Corsi, a big heavy hitter, three-time number one New York Times bestseller, the guy that deep-sixed uh, John Kerry. He knows Trump, and he says Trump knows more than he and I do combined about the New World Order, and that Trump basically has been playing possum with the establishment, and that's why they're freaking out. He said that last time he was on three weeks ago, and I was like, wow, because I had other people tell me this years ago, that Donald Trump was this big patriot. <laughs> And I was like, what? Donald Trump? That's the casino owner, the hotel owner, the developer. Uh, you know, flashy stuff on TV, kind of pop stuff. Well, I learned he gave hundreds of thousands over the years against NAFTA and GATT, against untrade, unfair deals for America. Even though he wasn't in those businesses, it really made him mad. He just loves America. He's not perfect. He doesn't want to screw us over under globalism and have Chinese 35% tariffs. That's why we got to get behind Trump. The whole system we say we hate is melting down, pulling out the stops, canceling elections. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231 is the number to join us. And we're also going to give you those websites again so you can get involved and stop the steal. TrumpBallotSecurity.org. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Phyllis Schlafly having the, the cruise stoats and ferrets and rats and weasels get into her operation, try to take it over yesterday. I mean, that's in World Net Daily. Uh, of course, he talked to her. Uh, my board plotted to fire me over Trump. I mean, that, folks, they're getting us thrown off radio stations over this, even though the station managers like Trump. We're getting good ratings. They are moving for the takeover and to create a one-party system. This is it. And Trump is just a manifestation of how they're going to counter populism. Briefly, you need to understand the Bushes. People have read this book that are experts on the Bushes, other authors, and it's a new level. Jeb Bush and the Bush crime family, the inside story of American dynasty, Roger Stone, and St. John Hunt, and a forward by Congressman John LeBoutelier, if I'm pronouncing that right. The point is, that I've read it, it's over the top powerful, understand the whole power structure, and the Clinton's war on women. New national polls out show Trump in a dead heat with Hillary or ahead of her. He brings this out, it's over. So both these books available, InfoWarsStore.com, and your purchase supports the broadcast. Uh, separately, we have DNA Force that is the strongest, most powerful nutraceutical out there. It has the true, naturally produced bio, PQQ, CoQ10, resveratrol, the list goes on and on, souped up with the key patented uh, amino acids to have your body upload it directly to the mitochondrial DNA. This is the stuff they've got, you know, in German labs that people pay $600 a bottle for. It is the true game changer. It's why it's such a bestseller. It's back in stock. Very hard to procure these uh, at California uh, purity levels, but we do it. It's very hard to have a multi-system like this with this many things in it that's completely pure and non-detectable or down to California levels. Uh, Infowarslife.com. InfoWarsStore.com, and we're going to have our crew in Denver Friday for the demonstration at the RNC for the, for the big steal. We're going to have them in Portland where the left has said no First Amendment allowed. We're going to be battling hard, uh, Rob Dew and Joe Biggs and others. Everybody should wear their Hillary for prison shirts, their Mullen Lobby shirts. You hear the, the leftist fascist go, ah, ah, at and just foam in fear. And after they attack the six people that were at uh, Oregon State, they're in Portland. They said, now you don't come back with the faculty doing it, saying there's no free speech here. Well, we need a bunch of people to go. They're going to be speakers that are listed. I'm sure they'll try to ban them. And the schools say no First Amendment. You need to be wearing your Molon Labe shirts. You need to be there to stand for the First Amendment and really expose the, the tyranny of these anti-free speech people. We're about to go back to Roger Stone uh, right now. But don't forget InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com. 
Don't forget, your purchases make it all possible for this platform to fight for tyranny and support our local affiliates. All right. Also, you can visit Roger Stone's own personal website that's excellent with news updates and videos, the latest Trump uh, inside info, stonezone.com. Now, going back to Mr. Stone while his Skype holds uh, there from sunny Florida, we still haven't covered a laundry list, the Phyllis Schlafly attack, other dirty tricks, what's coming next. Uh, and then I want to also get into some calls and, and call for people again to get ready to get your apartment rented or whatever or a nearby town be in cleveland book it now commit this is history i'm going to be there uh roger stone well alex first i really must uh, address the question of uh, uh those advocating that i be either arrested or banned from the convention so the establishment wants to take away my right of free speech my constitutional right of free assembly and free association on the basis of what evidence, I never called for violence. If CNN and Megyn Kelly were honest, they would pay, play the very next sentence in which I talk about the importance of a dialogue with the delegates. But of course, uh, they don't do that. So it is, uh, it's something you would expect from the Nazis. First, we're banning people, then we're banning books, then we're banning movies. Next, you know, we're, we're burning books. This is a very slippery slope. Then we're burning people. Uh, it's entirely anti-free speech. Look, I, above all, know that any violence in Cleveland is detrimental to my ultimate goal, the election of Donald Trump and the takedown. But it's been the Soros and the Democrats and the Republican operatives attacking Trump rallies. We're not the ones that are violent. Exactly. So, uh, so I think it's important that we touch on that. Look, Alex, I think you really expressed the importance, and that is the march on Cleveland, uh, details to come, the march and rally, you can go to stopthesteal.org. This will be information central on all the details. We are seeking to raise enough money to run buses from all over the United States. We are in negotiations with a couple of colleges that are out of session uh, for dormitory space. We're trying to access some other inexpensive housing for uh, the marshals, uh, for the organizers. We've had tremendous reception from the Trump supporters in Ohio and Pennsylvania and Delaware. Uh, they're already committed to uh, carloads of bodies. So as I've said previously, whether you have to walk, hitchhike, bus, take a train, or if you can afford to fly, come to Cleveland. It's important that we- And you them. are a guy that gets results. You stopped Reagan getting robbed with your partner, Paul, now heading up the campaign at many levels. You helped stop Al Gore getting in. You could say Bush stole it, and you turned against Bush later because he's corrupt. They're both corrupt, whatever. Point is, you know what you're doing. You've got a real battle plan. This is the place people need to put their time, their energy, and their money. Commit now. You're going to Cleveland, folks. It's a march on tyranny. It's a march against the people that want to steal this country. It's a march on the state apparatus, the would-be Republican Party Politburo. Uh, and again, I say, if you're coming and you're a Trump supporter, the Soros-funded agents provocateur, the agate prop, the demonstrators with the faux protest who are sometimes wearing Bernie Sanders T-shirts but aren't Bernie supporters, they are going to try to incite violence. And we're going to digital, we're going to digital photo yeah. them into a Google yeah. image scan. We always blow their cover. This will backfire. Yes, and it's essential that you ignore their taunts. They want violence so they can blame it on us. Ignore them. Find your delegates. Ask them respectfully to sign the pledge. If you were elected as a Trump delegate, you should be required to vote for Donald Trump. If you're not required by the rules, you should be re required by your own conscience and the fact that you represent the voters. You are so extreme to say that we should demonstrate on behalf of voting rights. You're probably one of those guys that wanted black people to be able to vote. I, I mean, you know, how dare you? Uh, we have to stop what is, in fact, the hijacking uh, of the Republican Party. Now, again, the best news today is not that Cruz claimed the Rubio delegates. Cruz, I'm sorry, not that Ted Cruz uh, claimed the endorsement of Marco Rubio or the formal support of his delegates. But what he's spinning is that he has the majority of them. Uh, and, and that is not accurate. I think those delegates are loyal to Marco Rubio. Uh, and there's many fine people in that delegation. So. Let's see, uh, you know, when we get to Cleveland. But this is typical of Cruz. This is why, of course, Donald calls him Lion Ted. Uh, he continues to lie about me on Fox, on CNN, claiming 
that I planted uh, the National Enquirer stories. Sadly, those outlets, uh, Fox gave me an opportunity to respond, but CNN has never allowed me to respond. So he can attack me, but I can't respond. Fortunately, I can come here to Infowars.com and reach four times as many people as that would see me on MSNBC. So uh, I'm blessed. I'm really blessed. Well, that's another question. Th uh, this moment in media where the Republican Democratic Party leadership's together, where the big channels are merging, where Obama's now on Fox News, Hillary's now great on Fox News, all this craziness is going on, all the system's powers against it. MSNBC's biggest shows have like 300, 400,000 viewers. They're a joke. They're lying, thinking they're in a vacuum, and no one knows they're lying, but everyone knows in your next breath you said, go to Cleveland, go knock on their doors, talk to the delegates, and try to get them to follow their pledge, but don't be violent. Everyone knows they're lying. Don't they understand that? And, and, and now they're announcing billionaires with a bigger uh, double down against Trump with ads. I mean, I've never seen them throw all their power against somebody. W what about the arrogance of the media? Do they realize how bad they're damaging themselves? Uh, you know, I think they will do anything to stop an outsider. They're the entire establishment fear, and this includes uh, the multinational corporation-owned media, the Washington insiders, particularly the lobbyists, the lobbyists who work for the donor class. That's exactly uh, who the plotters are here. And they're petrified by the idea of a nationalist uh, who opposes their international trade deals that get them cheap labor uh, and make our streets unsafe. Uh, who opposes their fiscal hokey pokery in which we're broke and they're always uh, 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 cooking the books. We go deeper and deeper in debt. Uh, Trump uh, is uh, a believer in American sovereignty. He's not for the global game plan. And that's his sin. And that is, and that is his sin. Uh, and they will stop at, at nothing. I mean, in all honesty, Alex, California is the big enchilada. California could be as important to the nomination of Donald Trump as it was to the nomination of Barry Goldwater, the first, the last outsider they nominated for president. Is the establishment Man, crazy I, enough to change some rule and try to cancel that election? Well, uh, I would say this. Uh, I think California will go forward, but this is one of the most expensive states in the nation to compete. The corporately funded Ted Cruz super PACs will funnel 25, 30 million in. Uh, he is actively on the ground uh, but you also see a major push from John Kasich. Again, I am one disagreeing with Donald Trump who thinks that it is beneficial to have the opposition to Trump split. John Kasich has every right to stay in this race. He got in the arena. He worked very hard. He won some delegates. Is better than Mitt Romney, who is in the dressing room all made up right now in the bullpen looking for a way to get in sure. and praying that the party bosses call him uh, at the 11th hour. Sure, I want to play a clip, though, and, and then I want to talk about uh, some of those issues. Uh, the, the dirty trickster, uh, the real dirty trickster, Rick Taylor, uh, who got kicked off the campaign for the stuff he was playing, is still for the, on the campaign, obviously. He's gone on these programs, CNN, MSNBC, you name it, and basically called for your arrest, called for your indictment. So I want new listeners to know, Mr. Stone wasn't just saying that a moment ago. This is really going on. Let's play part of that clip. What concerns me is Paul Manafort, of course, was a business partner with Roger Stone. And Roger Stone just threatened uh, delegates attending the, the convention in Cleveland, saying that he would publicize uh, delegates' hotel rooms and hotel room numbers uh, if they felt, if, if the Trump campaign felt like they, they were uh, part of stealing delegates uh, from Donald Trump. Now, he'd said that after he called on Trump supporters to come to Cleveland and somehow protest uh, the process if Donald Trump were denied the nomination. I think that is dangerous. We are a free society in America. We're not a third world country. We don't threaten violence against delegates. And I think that Reince Priebus and the RNC should move to ban Roger Stone from the convention because we cannot tolerate threats and threats of violence uh, in the process. Additionally, Donald Trump should repudiate those events, those, uh, his remarks. And then he goes on in other statements to say, again, there should be a criminal investigation for intimidation, all the rest of it. Uh, and that's in the Washington Post as well. Notice he says it's like a third world country that you'd want to protest to not have the elections canceled or the delegates taken or the popular vote taken. The third world thing is what Cruz is doing. Uh, I played it last hour because of time I'm not going to play it. But did you see all the clips of Cruz 
uh, Roger, running around saying he won the Democratic vote in Colorado and that you won't talk about it and Trump won't and, and Drudge is lying and won't show that he won? I mean, that is a total inversion of reality. Yeah, there's only one thing that Weiler guy was right about when he said we're a free society and therefore we have the right to peaceful protest. We have the right to mass in Cleveland. We have the right to find individual delegates and ask them to take the pledge uh, that if you were elected as a Trump delegate, you'll stick with Trump on every ballot and you'll stick with Trump on all important questions. Uh, this is how they intend to hijack this nomination. So uh, it is uh, it is the foaming of the mouth of the establishment, not us. We have said from the beginning uh, that our uh, protest will be peaceful. Uh, meanwhile, uh, as you know, uh, over uh, at the uh, at the Trump ballot security project, we continue to collect affidavits from voters in states like Texas and Kansas and Oklahoma and Utah, particularly. We're prepared to collect uh, affidavits in California or Pennsylvania uh, that prove uh, an inordinate number of irregularities uh, and a pattern of fraud. Now. The Trump forces may or may not, or any individual Trump delegate may or may not choose to challenge the seating of those delegates based on election fraud. This is historically precisely what the Eisenhower people did to Senator Robert Taft in 1952. Taft arrived in Chicago with 1,237 votes. The Texas and Louisiana delegates uh, were uh, unseated uh, based on a case that Eisenhower supporters had not been allowed to vote in the caucuses, uh, a case that doesn't need to be proven in a court of law because uh, the Republican convention is governed by its own rules and bodies. So uh, this is a potential real problem for the Cruz campaign. Uh, and if you want to support this important work, you can go to uh, the, the new website for the Trump security ballot security project, uh, which uh, these guys can supply for you. Wonderful. We we're going to break, and I want to come back and take a few calls. But you sent me a text this morning. You were really upset about the Phyllis Schlafly Eagle Forum founder. Uh, them, the the, the, the uh, Cruz people, uh, I guess their operatives in Eagle Forum, tried to take it over. And she said that she was told because she supports uh, Trump. I mean, this is unprecedented activity of basically espionage. Well, it's worse than that. It's, it, it is the, the mugging of a 90-year-old woman, a conservative icon somebody there at the birth of the conservative movement. Uh, it's a hijacking by, a, by a, uh, a gang of goons. And as will be proven very shortly, this plot to get Phyllis reaches all the way to the top levels of the Cruz campaign. Oh my so gosh, that is huge breaking news. Stay there, oh my gosh. Roger Stone, he's just, he literally, I'm not kidding. This guy, everything he says turns out to be true and everything he says is like the most gold inside baseball stuff. StoneZone.com. I'm Alex Jones with InfoWars.com. Stay with us back in three minutes with some of your calls. And at eight after next hour, we've got the geopolitical analyst, expert on global banking and on politics, Dr. Jerome Corsi, joining us for the balance of the hour. I got loaded phone lines here. Speaking of Jerome, I got a Jerome from New York, Alley in Illinois. Chad in Michigan, I want to go to everybody. we got five minutes now, six minutes, and then five minutes in the next hour. And Mr. Stone's got to go. StoneZone.com. Get both his books. Again, at InfoWarsStore.com and support his work and my work at the same time because we're all in this together. Uh, there's another story by Wayne Madsen up on InfoWars.com right now. Carl Rove backing Cruz and Clinton at the same time. I mean, the Republicans and Democrats are merging in front of everyone. This is crazy. Another article on InfoWars.com. University bans golf team from using Trump course, cites social justice. Catholic University has banned its teams from ever playing on the courses. I mean, this is economic warfare, folks. This is all these foreign interest in groups from the communist Chinese and the Pope attacking our election process. This is globalism. America ganged up on being taken over by traitors. And I just got to tell you, Cruz is now right up there with Hillary Clinton as an enemy of the republic. I'm sorry, I'll just say it. I don't like doing that. I know i got a lot of listeners that are into Cruz, not many, but some, and it's sick. Uh, getting back to Roger Stone, please flesh that out for a minute or two, then we're going to call, sir. i got Dr. Corsi uh, on Skype. He's going, hey, that's my headline for tomorrow. That's big. Yeah, we're all over this. This is the type of thing that can capture the public's understanding of Cruz, that he, if he's behind his campaign, a takeover of bank accounts and a patriot organization, Phyllis Schlafly, from within, that if it's being investigated, I think could be criminal. She defeated the coup. Uh, wow, this is amazing. Roger Stone, tell us the intel. I know you can't tell us specifics yet, 
uh, because you're working on that. I mean, you have the facts, but uh, this is going to be a big story. Tell us what you know. Well, I'm just, I want to leave it at this. This reaches all the way to the top of the Ted Cruz campaign, and it's not surprising. We've seen these tactics from the Cruz bots before. Who can forget the way they planted a story uh, on CNN that Dr. Ben Carson was getting out of the race, and then they contacted a pre-identified list of Carson voters, thousands of them, and told them, CNN just reported Ben Carson's getting out. Don't throw away your vote. Vote for Ted Cruz. Now, when they got caught, Ted Cruz reminded me of Dick Nixon. He was out there saying, well, I knew nothing about this. No, he knew everything about it. Uh, and the, the robo calls into uh, South Carolina saying Donald Trump supports the gay and lesbian agenda. And the robo calls uh, into uh, South Carolina telling pro-life voters that Donald Trump and his wife supported abortion on demand. So he complains about dirty tricks. He whines about dirty tricks but he's the master of dirty tricks. This is why I call him Tricky Ted. Uh, he's not what he says he is, folks. He is a Bush family retainer, largely responsible for the election uh, of George Bush. He wrote the legal arguments for Bush v. Gore. Uh, he recruited John Roberts to that legal team and pushed him for the Supreme Court where he approved Obamacare. That's the real Ted Cruz. All right. Republican. Let's go to a call before we go to break. Al in Illinois, um, we're, uh, this is Colorado Delegate Vote Fraud Committee. Uh, Al, you're on the air. Quick question or comment for Roger Stone. Hey, how's it going? Uh, Roger Stone, I just wanted to know, uh, because of this uh, Colorado incident where they set it up so it's rigged uh, with no voters allowed, how many more states are coming up? And then I also have a YouTube video that most people have not caught on to, but it does have a ton of YouTube videos. Uh, the name of the YouTube video, if you want to search it on YouTube, is Colorado Trump Delegate Removed and Replaced. And he basically goes on record. He, he does a Facebook mentions in his video or YouTube video. I'm not really sure how he did it. Uh, but he's basically saying that he waited in line for hours to vote for Donald Trump. Yes, yes, I've uh, seen the video. We should do a story on it. They've had thousands of these calls. They take the real delegates, re replace them with operatives. Powerful info. Uh, Roger, that's what you're talking about. This is crazy. Yeah, this is part and parcel of the kind of Gestapo tactics that uh, Paul Manafort spoke about on Meet the Press. What they're doing to Phyllis Schlafly, another example. Uh, it's the, incredible. Uh, Stay there. I mean, imagine what he do as president. This is unbelievable. 70 seconds. We're back. Take a few more calls. Thank you, Alan, Illinois. I'm Alex Jones, folks. Spread the word. Infowars.com. Man, I tell you, it, it is such an epic time to be alive. It is so incredible. And I, I knew I was right to get behind Trump like eight months ago. But now, I mean, I'm sure he's the guy. Absolutely sure. Wow. Uh, boy, the, the system is shooting its wad trying to block him. So any way you cut it, as long as we're politically involved, this is a win. Roger Stones with us five more minutes. We're taking phone calls. Crystal in North Carolina, you're on the air with Roger Stone. Go ahead. Hey, Roger. Hey, Alex. I had a question for you guys. Um, what about these supporters who cannot make it out to the, uh, the convention? What can we do here at home to help support you guys out in the field? Tell everybody else to go there, donate money. Uh, be involved, call and talk radio, send out our news articles, just get aggressive because you're being robbed, you're being attacked. It's like a mugger's attacking you. you got to get pissed and just engage and run their butt over. I'm sorry. Roger, go ahead. If, look, if you can't make it to Cleveland, that's fine. Send us 10 bucks. Send us $25, $35, $50, whatever you can afford. I want to run buses, uh, air-conditioned buses, from major centers across the country, certainly across the Midwest. The more money we raise, the more buses we can get. People need some place to bunk. We're looking for low-cost housing. This is a uh, war. This is a war. It costs money. Commit or lose everything. They're going to rob you of everything, folks, unless you commit. We, we want to buy uh, 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 Internet ads telling people where they need to be. We want to build the largest outdoor rally in Cleveland history. And notice how scared about, the mainstream media is. They know there's millions of Trump supporters in that area. They are scared. The response from the local Trump supporters in northeastern Ohio has been amazing. But I know people who are coming all the way from Florida. I know people who are coming all the way from Utah. This is going to be the place to be. Uh, we've invited Pat Buchanan to speak. 
Uh, we will invite Ron Paul at least to speak about the question of the tactics of the steel. He's not a Trump supporter, but uh, he has been a victim of this same kind of uh, establishment. Yeah, I, I love Ron Paul, but he should speak out against the theft because it happened to him. This is even better, though. And as you know, Trump has called for the audit of the Fed, uh, which I think libertarian voters need to recognize that, unfortunately, Ted Cruz missed that vote because his puppet masters wouldn't let him vote for it. They like the Fed just as it is. Let's take another call. Uh, let's go ahead and go to Eve in Texas. Eve, you're on the air. Real quick question. Thank you. Hello, Alex and Roger. I have a question to both of you. If Donald Trump, and I am a Trump supporter, if Donald Trump is not the nominee and they decide to go with Ted Cruz, and if Ted Cruz wins the presidency, do you all think that they will choose Jeb Bush to run as VP and then we would have a short-term presidency? Uh, I think that uh, Jeb gave a very interesting review to Politico just before he dropped out of the race in which he mused that he could actually get nominated without winning a certain primary state. In other words, he blurted out the truth. Uh, this is why I'm asking people to read Jeb and the Bush crime family. Remember when Neil Bush was moved into a crucial position in Ted Cruz's campaign? Neil Bush being George uh, W. Bush's brother, a man whose defrauding of a, an SNL costs U.S. taxpayers $1.5 billion. Uh, but because he's a child of privilege and a member of the Bush crime family, he spent not a day in jail. Sure. Well, also in closing, Roger, what about Paul Ryan? They admit you said is getting ready to run. Uh, when he says he's not, it means he is meeting with donors, having secret meetings. He's suiting up. Yeah, I think that, that there's no question. Uh, he's going about this the same way he went about his campaign to be speaker by first acting like Caesar and saying, I don't want it. I'm not interested. Uh, obviously, he would take it if it were available. Uh, Mitt Romney is uh, irked that he didn't run. Remember, he didn't run this year because he was convinced that Jeb's sure, nomination sure. was inevitable. Ro Roger, incredible info. Thanks for all the breaking news. Uh, thanks for your courage. Uh, Trump, ballotsecurity.org, stopthesteal.org. Please stay in contact. Thank you for your daily updates you send me. God bless you. He's talking to my riders. The guy's working so hard, folks. Thank you so much. You're, you're a tiger. God bless you. We'll be back with Jerome Corsi.